Okay. Now we're recording. So any type of business, we need to keep track of what's going on. You know, that's, of course, assumed. In network marketing in particular, though, it, it can be more difficult in the sense that we have, uh, well, hopefully we have a lot of activities going on, so it can get more complicated. And a key element in, I mean, follow-up is the third, you know, we, uh, when we go through our a lift process, follow-up is the fourth day of the week on Thursdays. And you've heard it said over and over again that follow-up is critical. I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely critical to have a good follow-up system. And we can invite as many people to, to look at ASEA and have as many people on the list as we want. But without the follow-up, it's pretty much useless. It's spinning wheels. So that's really what the key part of uh, this keeping track is about. So let's go ahead into this here. <clears throat> There's really a, a series of key elements that are needed in a system for keeping track. You got to have some kind of way of managing your contacts. Uh, I mean, whether you have, if you're only dealing with one or two people, you can use your head, that's your system. But uh, when you're dealing with five or more contacts, you really have to have a, a, a method of keeping track. You need to track which stage the person's in, because in the a lift process now, we're going to be going through a, a sequence where first we have the, and we'll, we'll get into that later, but basically the, the person is moving through the information stages up to the point where he, can, he or she can make a decision, you know, whether to join you in business or uh, purchase a product. And then the <clears throat> third key element is alerts. You know, uh, some people can keep track of things in their head, again, when, when they're supposed to do this or that, but, but you need appointment reminders of some sort. And the fifth el fourth element is tracking what's going on, the interaction between the person, the prospect, and yourself. And a fifth element is ideally to be able to synchronize between um, the different things you might use, your, your iPhone, your um, laptop, your uh, home computer, synchronize all that information. So that would be some key elements, uh, just ways to keep track, you know, without going into too much detail. This starts, you can start from the most basic, <clears throat> like a little uh, index card where you put, um, actually, let me do one thing. I'm gonna make my screen a little smaller here. There we go. That's for the recording. I'm gonna have that smaller. Okay, one second. Then. Um, you know, an index card, you can keep track of things in, a, in the old school way, and a lot of people still use that. Um, similarly, you could have a day timer, and this is what Trish used for the majority of her um, networking career, and still uses it to this day, although she's probably three quarters transitioned over to the electronic mode. <clears throat> As we get into the electronics, <clears throat> ASEA has their ASEA business coach. <coughs> and what we're really going to talk about most today is using things that you have, most people have already, a uh, computer address type book and the, um, tele the iPhone or um, Android phones. So let me, let me just move on here. So that's what we're going to talk about over in this next uh, 30 minutes or so. Overview of the needs and the method we just did. We're gonna be focusing again on a computer-based method, which focuses on app, spe specifically for Apple products, but really these things correlate to Windows and the Google Apps and the MS Outlook and things like that. And we're gonna follow a flow. We're gonna follow a person from initial being, initially being on the list 
uh, through the prospecting stages to a final decision. <coughs> so no matter what type of um, system you have, you want to keep track of people through various stages of basically the information process where we're inviting people to learn about ASEA and to take them to a point where they can make a decision. So you can boil that down. It, it follows our A-lift process that we teach in the, that the, our leaders teach in the morning. Um, we're not talking about attitude though, in this case, this is more of the practical steps. And, <clears throat> you know, here's the, here's the steps. You got to be on the, have your people on the list. You know, basically number one thing is uh, they're on the list. You got the info. The second thing is in, the initial contact. Uh, the third thing would be connecting with the person, actually talking to them and inviting them to, to use a tool. And the fourth thing would be to follow up um, when they have watched a tool to see what they liked about it and et cetera. The, this may be the time to do the three-way. And the fifth step would be a decision step. And then the sixth step would be teach the person to do the same. Now, <coughs> What I will say, I'm going to be, well, let me see what's next here. I think that's the end of the show. And then to have a done group. So the reason I bring this up is no matter what system you use, you want to be able to track people through that process. Whether it's an index card system, you might have your um, big indexes be these steps and you have all the cards within each step be the people. In uh, Genie, I'm not sure. Um, let me give a little disclaimer. I I did a lot of work with Genie at the beginning, as far as testing it for and and giving feedback. But um, personally, I don't. I, I'm subscribed to Genie, but I'm still learning it. I don't really use it now because I use this other system. I find it works good. Um, so I'm not totally familiar with the steps in Genie. I'm not sure if they actually go through these steps but they do have a very good follow-up system that I know uh, in Genie. So let me go to, at this point, I'm gonna bring up a contact manager. And <clears throat> this is, let me make it a little bit bigger here. No. How do I make it bigger? Let me think about this. I think I gotta make, oh, I know how to make it bigger. Hmm, that's not making it bigger. Well, I'm going to have to change a screen size resolution. Let me do that one second. And if anybody has a quick question, you can unmute yourself while we're here. And we'll discuss that. Um, I have a question. Um, sure. Hi, I'm Dorothy. Hi. And I have a new Mac. I've had a Mac for a long time, but I still haven't learned how to uh, really take advantage of it, but the contact manager. Uh -huh. I mean, I have my contacts. Where's the contact manager? Okay, so, and let me let me back up here before I get into that because I wanted to. I should talk a little bit more about. It. I'll answer you in a second here. Um, but let me just mention the the ASEA business coach um, is. Let me just, I'm not necessarily going to be, like I said, I'm not going to be focused on that. Let me address that. Um, this is a service that is provided by ASEA now, and it's a wonderful program that they started. And it has a, a fee-based thing, like $19 a month, which is for someone in a business that's, who's doing a business, $19 a month is not a big overhead for sure. So the big advantages I see for this is for a person 
who doesn't have um, a, a really connected upline sponsor that they can mentor with. Uh, because here, let me just switch to A Team Support. If we go to A Team Support, we have the three steps for getting started. And the third step, the second step is to find a mentor. It's critical. You need to find a mentor to be successful. And ideally, that would be your upline or a sponsor or someone close to you in the upline where they can actually take you right out and get started right away. <clears throat> so Jeannie does that, and it, and, it, and it does a good job because it takes the trainings from the leaders in ASEA and the industry. Um, I find it a little bit um, cumbersome, though, because it, it, it's almost, it doesn't take you right out to get started. You have to do all these things beforehand. So... Um, it's very, very good if you don't have an active upline. It's very good because it, it has ways of prompting you for follow-up and things like that and suggested scripts, um, So, which we also we provide the scripts so also in the A-Team support. Um, but the point is it's, it's all pretty standard stuff, but it's a very good system. I'm going to not go into that in depth here because, um, like I said, I'm not totally familiar with it. So I just want to put that up front that it's a very good system that ASEA has out and a lot of people are, are using it, um, but I don't have all the details. So I just wanted to mention that. Okay, so back to, um, sorry, who had the question there again? Dorothy? Dorothy, yeah. Yeah, Dorothy. Um, where you go for the, on an Apple, I, I do this by, um, there's two ways of doing it. The easiest way actually is to go up to your magnifying glass. Do you see that? It might be hidden by the, uh, hidden by the, thing, the uh, screen. But up at the top right of your screen is the magnifying glass. And when you click on that, you'll see a spotlight search. And just type in address, where actually it's contacts. They, they call it contacts now. See that? But I just typed in contacts, hit return, and it pops up. So what it looks like down in the bottom is it looks like this thing here. I think you can see the way at the bottom left of your screen looks like a little address book. And that's the easiest way to find it is through Spotlight up at the top right. Um, it's also down in your task bar though. It looks like this little book. And what I'll say up front is other computer systems have similar things. So Windows will have MS Outlook. Um, Google has the uh, some kind of Google contacts. So they all have similar things. Is that is that what you're asking initially, Dorothy? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and mute you again, but you can unmute yourself as needed. Um, so here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a process of keeping track of contacts in address book and again it's it can get as simple as the, this very same process is used if you had a index cards um but the whole idea is you have to have your groups remember the groups i i said at the beginning um let me show you the flow of address book though initially when you first add start address book or contacts or whatever they call it um everything is in the group all contacts if you have older versions of Apple, for example, now it won't show it right here. You have to go up to window and, or something like that or view and view the uh, groups. You have to view the groups. So this is the new version. Everything's all on one page. It's very nice. Um, but everything gets put into all contacts initially. And they can be put in one by one by clicking a plus down here new contact, or they can be put in, brought in through import. If you have a group of them, a group of them say in Gmail, and the same, same very similar thing in, in uh, Genie. You can do them one by one or import a group of them. Same thing, and same thing in other uh, Google and stuff like that. But here's where it gets a little interesting, and, and this is the key to it. Just like in the, um, I wish I had a little index card to hold here. 
just like you had the big tabs to designate your groups in the index file, these are your big tabs here, and they're called groups. The way you can add a group is by going down here in the plus and say new group. So I just made a new group. I'm going to say it's going to be zero new group. I don't know if you can see me typing at the bottom. New group one. Now, here's one tip is I put a zero in front of the name because it's going to put these in order of alphabetical order. So if you put a, a number in front, you can keep them right in sequence the way you want. That's what all these one, two, three, four, fives are. But here's my new group I just put in. Actually, I had an old group here from last week, last time I did this. I'm going to remove that. If I right click on it, well, I guess I don't just right click. I can rename it, for example, if I double click. But I'm going to uh, delete it by hitting the delete key. And it's going to ask me, do I want to delete it? <clears throat> okay, so here's my new group I just made. There's nobody in it because everybody say in all in the all contacts but I can move people into it just by going like this I can see them here and when I click on them it's going to change who they are over on the right but I can just take them and drag them into the group here it doesn't take them away from the big group all contacts but it does add them to the new group so here here they are also in the new group um, I can remove them, the contact. So I'm going to click on the contact itself. And I'm going to say either remove from group or actually delete the contact. But let me just remove them from the group. Okay, so that's how you make a group and uh, similar things in other computers. This type of thing is not in Genie. I don't think they have groups like this, actually, but they do take you through the stages. So here's, here's what you can do with these groups. Um, here's what you can do with these groups. I'm going to find some of the, I don't have much notes. Hmm. Well, I can make a new, let's just say I make a new contact. New contact. And I'm going to call them AAA. And I can put the phone number in and all that stuff. But here's my new contact. Initially, he's going to go into all, only he's only going to be here. But I'm going to take this guy and drag him into the new group I just made. Um, actually, I should drag him into list. Because I just showed you new group just to show you what it's like. But there is, there is the person. But let me drag him into um, list. So list is the list of group of people that I want to, um, my 100 name list or so, but I start with the top 10. This is my list of people I want to contact. That's the first step. You have to have people in the list. So here's AAA that I just dragged into that group. They're also in all contacts. But what you'll see is there's a note section you can type in notes. And this is where I keep track of what I'm doing. Um, because initially they're going to start on the list, but the first step is I'm going to call them and introduce them to ASEA. So when I'm ready to introduce AAA to, the, to ASEA, I'm going to take AAA, again, from this middle section, which shows all the people in the group. This middle section shows everybody that's in the group that I made. And I put these other people in here from before. So I'm going to take AAA and put them into introduce now because I'm, I'm, I called them up and I introduced them and lo and behold they're going to be also, they're always going to be in all contacts at this point they're still on list but what happens is they're also now in the introduce here they are in introduce so I'm going to put a note in here saying that I called AAA on whatever date And, and just put your notes of your conversation. You can keep track of it as you want, however you want. Now, the nice feature about this type of thing is you can be doing this on your laptop. You can be doing this on your hand, handheld. And assuming you have this set, set up right, it's going to synchronize seamlessly between all three. 
So I can go right into my um, iPhone within seconds, go into my contact manager, and I'll see the same information that I just typed um, in here. And that's, and let me just tell you, I spent hundreds of dollars on contact managers in the past. Um, there's programs, I contact, um, well, not I contact, uh, I, I forget the names of them, but you, you can spend hundreds of dollars on contact managers. And I've, I went back to this because it's simple, it, it did what I want, and it's seamless integration. So hopefully that's not too much information at one, one but uh, I hope you get to the point of what I'm doing here. So AAA is now in, in this group of people that I'm introducing. The nice part about this is that at any point in time, I can go into, for example, my list of new people. Oh yeah, so this guy's in here, but he's also, excuse me, he's also in this list. So I wanna actually remove them. I'm moving AAA from number one to number two. So what I'm gonna do is select them here, and I'm just gonna hit the delete key and remove them from this group. So what I did is I effectively moved AAA from list to introduce. So here he is in the introduce group. Because I can go to the list group and see who's left on my list that I haven't contacted yet, I haven't introduced at any point in time. And I can go to the introduce thing and, and say, hey, um, here's my initial calls to these people. Um, and maybe it, it was busy and I left the message. Um, but assuming I did connect with them, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say connected. And if they were busy and left a message, I'm gonna leave them in the introduced st stage. But say I did get them and I send uh, whatever, amazing molecules. And this is where Genie is really good at it has a good feature for sending uh, materials and seeing if the person opened them. Uh, but send amazing molecules point specifically to redox breakthrough and um, I see an opportunity because this person is interested in the, in the business. And follow on um, October 1st. So a couple of things here now. I put this note in here. Um, I'm putting in a follow-up. And before I show you about the follow-up here, um, what, I, what I've done now is I've made the initial contact. And I hope you understand this. You have to get familiar with how this works and your own computer might work differently. But this is the group of contacts that are in this. I mean, the list of contacts that are in this group. Over here is the groups. And here's the specific contact I click on. So you see how that works? So I just put in for that specific contact the notes. How, um, however now, what happened? I'm, I'm really in the follow-up stage now for AAA. So I gotta move AAA into the follow-up stage. See how I'm doing? I'm just dragging them right in and dropping them. Now AAA is over here in the follow-up group, there he is. He's also in the introduce group still. So I'm gonna remove him from the introduce group by just clicking on him and hitting the delete key or the backspace key, remove from group. If I hit delete, it's gonna remove them all together from everything, the whole, you know, the whole address book. So I removed him from the group. He's not in introduce anymore. Now I can go into follow up and see who I need to follow up with. However, there's a key element here that we need to bring in with the follow-up. And that is a reminder. One way that you can do the reminder is to write them in your, um, your day timer, if you have a day timer. Um, a second way you can do a reminder is if you're on um, Genie, of course, Genie will send you a uh, email and actually I think it'll give you a text message to remind you that the appointment's coming up. But with this method, you can open up your calendar right away. As soon as you make the appointment, you open up your calendar 
and you go to um, October 1st, which is right here, and you make the appointment. Call AA at whatever time, at um, 7 p.m. And that's basically it. it. I have it set up that as soon as I do that, it actually sets a, an alarm. It's automatically going to set the alarm for five minutes ahead of time. And that could be changed. But now, lo and behold, if I go into my phone, it's going to be in there and it's going to ring on my phone too. So um, this is kind of moving quickly. Uh, calendar is, is same thing. You can go up to Spotlight. Let me get rid of a calendar here. So say I'm in here. You can go up to Spotlight in Apple and type in calendar, and it's going to bring it right up. Or you can go down to the bottom. I have mine pop up, but most people have them there all the time. And here's calendar. You can just click on the calendar, and it pops it up. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, I actually have categories in, in the calendar, but they really are not needed. You don't need categories in the calendar. Um, it just color codes them if you like to get fancy. Uh, the other thing I'll show you briefly is, well, I don't really use it very much, is a task manager, reminders. But you can also set reminders for, um, you know, what calling people and stuff like that. Um, and you can set them, yeah, but I don't really use that, so I'm not going to confuse the issue, but some people like reminders. Um, okay, so where were we? So now we're in follow-up. The alarm rings. We talk to AAA. Maybe we, we do a three-way maybe with the person um, who is more knowledgeable than us, our, our mentor and uh, or doesn't have to be a mentor it could be anybody and the person is that this uh, you know they say i just need more information and uh, there may be or maybe they say hold off i really don't want to do anything i don't want to look at this right away so uh, you can make your own categories but like a hold off step is for people who say hey i really am too busy to look at all this right now call me um, and you say, well, can I call you back in a month? And um, they say, sure, call me back in a month. Or if they say, no, don't call me ever, you can have a group saying, no, I don't want to be called. Um, so you can kind of make these groups as you wish and use the numbers again to put them in the order you wish. But the general categories are they're on the list, you, you know, that introduce follow-up, uh, decision. So decision is either yes or no. Um, so let's uh, say, let's go back to my AAA person here. And I talked to him on uh, October 1st, and they say, um, want to be diamond in a year. Well, a lot of people want to be a diamond in the air, and that's good. So hopefully this person will carry through on the actions um, to move that way. But the point is he wants to do the business. So you take, uh, take them to yes. And now this person, AAA, is in the uh, yes group here. And I'm going to remove them from follow-up group I could have done that right away by hitting delete key remove from group now again these similar commands are going to be for the um, address uh, I mean Outlook MS Outlook and also probably for Google um, whatever they call it Google contacts so I, I can't give you the exact sequence there because I'm not familiar with them but similar things will be happening in, in these other um, programs. So now AAA is in the yes teach group and 
that way, again, you can go here and say, hey, I got these five people that need to be taught. They, typically, they'll, they'll be your first level people and you're responsible for, for teaching them the um, back office and your, the five people here that I have in here, for example, six people. You, I'm responsible for teaching them the back office and for um, bringing them through their first two or three contacts, being their mentor, uh, which is what, I, what we really like about that feature is they're out there getting started right away. They don't have to know, they hardly have to know anything because all they have to do is get people on a list and then you help them with their first connections, uh, whether it be an in-home or um, inviting them to the local meeting, going with them with your person and also with AAA to the local meeting, not the, not the, AAA meeting, of course, and then, um, you know, after three or four or five times, the person's going to be trained, essentially, hopefully, that he can start doing it on his own and start training his people, his or her people, how to do it. So that's the ideal flow. With the genie, um, you know, a similar process is going to be happening where you're going to be using the, the genie scripts and, and uh, the uh, automatic artificial intelligence to help you move through these introductions through to the final stages. So, um, okay. Hopefully that made sense. That's pretty much what I wanted to go through. And we went through our 30, 30 minutes. So let me open up for questions. That was a lot of information. And, and let me just say, um, this is a high tech world that we're doing here, but it's relatively manageable, I think. And the nice thing is it tends to synchronize through all your devices. But again, people can be successful just by using some of those um, basic methods that we showed here. I mean, index card file holder is, is really just as good as far as keeping track of groups. And um, a day timer is excellent as far as going to that day and seeing what you need to do for that day. So it um, doesn't have to be high tech, it could be low tech. So at this point, I'll open it up for questions. And let me uh, let me do this here. Stop share. I don't see my sharing button anymore. Oh, I know. I made the screen bigger. I don't know how to stop sharing because I made my screen bigger and it went off the screen. Let me see if I can do this. Hmm. I got to make the screen smaller. Hold on one second. Let me get back to the screen. There we go. Hmm. Stuck. It's stuck. Let me see what else I can do here. There we go. Stop share. Okay. So hopefully that was useful to everybody. And if you have any questions at this point, well, if you don't have questions, go and enjoy your Saturday. Thank you. But for those that do have questions, feel free to ask. Uh, may I ask a non-compliant product question? Yeah, let me get to Martha, Marty to first. Okay. Is it Martha? Oh, no, it's Marty. I change it every time I get on, and it still comes up Martha. <laughs> okay. I changed that a long, long time ago. I just want to tell you, it's wonderful to see the system right in front of me with just 10 names and then the whole thing available. But one of the valuable things I got out of this morning was watching how you handle yourself when your computer isn't doing what it's supposed to do. Because I pretty much just go into meltdown and maybe say nasty things. And I noticed that you just 
you know, you just kindly talk to yourself and, and let it all solve itself. So thank you very much for a clear and informative morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, I know you're, you're getting, a lot of people, my, my wife included, are getting used to electronics. Mm -hmm. um, but don't, don't disparage the idea of just this, the basic stuff, you know, the index card system or the other. Uh, some people use um, Excel. I didn't put that in, but you can use Excel spreadsheets. But I think that's... I've tried. If you're, you're going to be doing spreadsheets, you might as well be doing what I showed you because it doesn't get you anywhere. It doesn't synchronize or anything. No, so. This is yeah. great. Thank, Thank you, Bob. You. Okay. Yeah, Wayne? Was it Wayne? Uh, yeah, I'm new. So I don't know if it's proper to ask non-compliant product questions or not. Uh, does okay, Desiree twenty-eight help varicose veins? Okay, well, let's say um, I'd have to stop recording probably first, but let me answer that in a little bit. Let me just ask other people if they have more okay. um, contact. Okay. Thing. We'll get to the get to that in a second. Anybody else have any contact questions before I stop the recording? Um, could I ask? Oh, uh, one. Yeah. Hi, Dorothy. Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh, yeah, this is Nancy um, from Montana. Oh. It says that you record. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Sorry, I, th I was on a different person. How about, how about that? Is that better? That's better. Anyway, where do we find these recordings of, of your wonderful webinars? Okay, well, that's a good question because um, right now, if you go to ateamsupport.com, and I could show it, put it on the screen, but I don't think I need to. But ateamsupport.com, and if you go to a um, section called training, well, let me okay. make I'm just going to go look myself. Yeah, training, and then startup trainings. There's an archive of all these things. Oh, fantastic. However. Yeah, I'm having some def technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, no problem. But thank uh, you very much. You're welcome. However, let me just put in a disc, um, uh, heads up. This weekend, I'm changing, it'll be this weekend, I think. I'm going to change A Team Support uh, and update it and have a simplified menu structure. So um, I think it's going to be what we're going to have is basically everything else. So it's going to be, and this weekend later, it's going to be under everything else, it's called. And then there'll be a training section under everything else. So okay. just look for the training section. I did have a question. This is Dorothy. Um, yeah, hi, Dorothy. Hey. Um, I'm wondering if you would have any um, answer to something that I, I am in Chrome as my server, and I would type in my website. I get a message. This keeps happening. It says access denied, and it has a SIA. It's like an official page from a SIA. And um, when I try and reach my website under Safari, there's no problem. Do you know it? Would you have anything to say about that? Maybe yeah, there's, there's a quick answer probably to that. Um, so you, you verified you're using the right address and that stuff, of course. So um, there, in every browser, there's what they call clear the cache. And you need to clear your cache. Um, easiest way to do it? is let me just go to screen share real quick easiest way to do it and again depends on your browser but um, they're all similar is um actually it's up it's up at the top under um i don't know can you see yeah you can see at the top but the top, it showed, I'm using Safari browser right now. But if you go to a help button, and I'm not sure if Windows has help anymore. I, I don't know how they're doing it. But the way I like to do it is I just type in cache. And there it is right there, empty caches. Or however you say it. I don't know if I'm saying it right. So the bottom line is you should empty your cat, catch, cache. And also perhaps empty history. If you just kind of clear everything, that should solve the problem, I hope, I would hope. So clear history. Great, 
thank you. I, I, I figured it was a setting. I had no idea. That's great. That hopefully will do it. I'm pretty sure that'll do it. Because what, what it is, you're stuck on something old. Um, what is it saying? That, or what, you're in the U.S., right? It says access denied, but it does say something about in my country at the bottom. I can't remember. Yeah, so somehow it made you, locked you in for some other country. Maybe you were, I don't know. In any case, clearing the caches and history should help. All right, any other um, computer questions? And then we'll get back to Wayne, unless, he, unless Wayne has to leave. Uh, I'm good. I do have a hat question, though. All right. Uh, when you wear your Asiya hat to the store, do strangers come up and say, what's that about? No, not too much, to tell you the truth. Um, mm. what, where it does come into play, though, is um, when I am talking to someone and meeting a new friend, whether it's at the store or on the, at, the air, at, the, at the lunch counter or whatever, um, and they, you know, the conversation gets around to, so what do you do for, um, what do you do? And I just point to my hat and I say, I, I work with the C. It's a, it's a new cellular health, um, company. And I'm not the, I'm not the best one for introducing people because that's not what I do. My wife is more that person, but, um, that's where it does come in to help hand, helpful is because I can point to it and say, this is what I do. Okay. But that doesn't mean someone might not come up and say that. All right. Anybody else? All right. Well, let me, let me hey, go. Bob? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I don't have the camera on because I'm working out in the garden. Oh, I see you working out. You're on, you're on your Sia bottles. <laughs> I'm working out right now in my garden. But uh, the question is, this is going to needs to be addressed with the IT regarding cookies and cash because uh, it's happening to me and it's going to happen again and again what happens 